Today we will talk about the Punjab farmers who have made a Delhi chalo call and are marching towards the capital. We will also talk about a recent observation made by the Madhya Pradesh High Court. But first we will talk about the violence that erupted in Haldwani over the weekend. Hi, I am Niharika Nanda and you are listening to 3 Things, the Indian Express news show. Last week, the city of Haldwani in Uttarakhand witnessed severe violence that resulted in the deaths of five people and left dozens injured. This happened after a drive was conducted by the local administration that led to the demolition of a mosque in the Banbhulpura area. As stones were pelted and cars were torched, the situation quickly escalated to the point where Chief Minister Pushkar Dhami issued shoot on sight orders. To know what transpired and the current situation in the city Indian Express's Avnish Mishra joins us directly from Haldwani. So Avnish let's start from the beginning. Tell us what caused the violence to erupt in Haldwani last week. So the administration is saying that there was a piece of land in Banbhulpura area and it was known among the people as Malikka Bagicha. So there was a Mariam mosque and also a madrasa over there and according to them it was a uh, built on Nazul land which is government land not officially mentioned in the land records. So for last some time there was the thing that they have to uh, demolish it because it was an illegal encroachment and after the high court it refused to give a uh, relief to the petitioners and those people who built the mosque the government decided that okay they need to demolish it and soon after the demolition happened uh, violence started and uh, yeah that was the trigger point and soon the violence turned into like uh, much more worse with the stone pelting and vehicles set on fire Right and do we know why the demolition happened in the very first place what do the authorities have to say about it what we know about the history of this land is that before independence it was uh, taken on lease by some person who ultimately sold it to one abdul malik and abdul malik then uh, built the mosque and the madrasa somewhere around in 2002 and since then this mosque and the madrasa was there but later the government said that this was not a uh, built on a personal land possessed by any one person but it was on nazul land which as i told you uh, is government land which is not mentioned in the land records so because of that the government was saying that it was illegal encroachment they found it their duty to uh, demolish the structure and take possession of the land So initially after giving a notice on uh, 30th of January they said that you need to remove this structure and if that is not happening then they will be demolishing it then later i mean the concerned parties they presented a paper which was of 2007 it was a high court order given to that time dm of nanital saying that that there are some applications regarding this land and you need to you know look at those documents and then take a decision on what to do next so after completing the paperwork and going with all the legal formalities this they decided that okay they need to go ahead with the plan of uh, demolishing those structures and avnish talk to us about the violence when did it start and how did the whole thing unfold based on what the administration is saying is that it started with arson which started soon after the demolition around 5:30 pm arson started which was followed by some people attacking the police station the banbhulpura police station i mean there was a gherao of the police station and uh, i mean they allegedly set on fire several vehicles which were parked outside the police station they did not let those trapped inside the thana to come out or escape from there there were also some shots fired and after that there was an order from the local sdm that okay the policemen are authorized to open fire below the waste to disperse the crowd there was also some use of tear gas and uh, as i said uh, shots were also fired from the side of the police and seeing the situation what was the government's immediate reaction what did the uttarakhand government do about it while the violence was unfolding the information like was passed on to the state government additional forces were called from the nearby police stations the local sdm as well as the chief minister they i mean the dm later informed that the sdm allowed the policemen to open fire below the waste so that they could disperse the crowd but at the same time there was also an official order from the chief minister around 8 pm on that day that okay the local police is authorized to open fire and use force to disperse the crowd and also in self defense right but there are also claims being made about how this violence was orchestrated can you tell us a little about those allegations 
I mean, this statement has been made both from the DM side as well as the chief minister that it appears that this whole thing was pre-planned because initially when there was a drone surveillance in the area on 30th of January, there was nothing on the rooftops. But later, the district administration claimed that those people were well prepared. They had petrol bombs with them. They had stones stored on the rooftops. They also had country-made weapons with them. So they are claiming that this was a well-planned thing and they always had this plan to attack the police forces when the demolition will happen and the dm went on to say that this was not a communal act or it was not something which we can call a communal violence but it was an attack against the state and it was a step to kind of challenge the state authorities and the symbols of the state so abnish did the administration anticipate that this could happen Yeah, there is a report from the local intelligence unit making rounds on the social media and I also talked to the police official. So this report kind of suggested that in case this demolition thing happens, there is a strong possibility of a very strong opposition from the locals because these were the symbols of religion and people associate these things with, you know, something very important. And based on that, the LIU report also suggested that it would be better to remove the encroachment in the morning time so that uh, there is a minimum number of people present there. However, the demolition actually happened at 4.30 in the evening. The report also suggested that it would be important to do the videography of nearby areas using drones so that things kept on rooftops or people gathered on rooftops could be seen beforehand. However, the last uh, surveillance using drones was on 30th of January, which was like more than a week ago. It also suggested that uh, there should be barricading on all connecting roads and nearby area and should be heavy deployment of police and PSC forces. However, like most of these things were probably not followed and even after there was speculation and intelligence report that something like this might happen, these things actually happened. And when we talked to the senior official, they said that there is a magisterial inquiry ordered and all these aspects, including what led to the incident, what intelligence report the district police and administration had and what measures were taken, all this will be part of that uh, magisterial inquiry. And what do we know about the casualties? Do we have any details on that? As of now, the police are saying that the only source they have is the deaths which were reported in the nearby hospitals. And based on that, they are saying that the total casualties were five in this case, which included four locals of Haldwani, while one person who belongs to Bihar and he also died soon after he arrived in Haldwani in search of a job. And Avnish, you also met the locals and the victims. So what did they have to say about the violence? I talked to the family members of those who died in the violence. Among those, like there is a, also a father-son duo. And like the father was trying to look for his son. And at the same time, he fell victim to a stray bullet. And so I talked to the son and the brother of the victim. And he said that while they carried his father to a nearby clinic, he found that his brother was already lying there with a gunshot wound. Family of another victim claimed that that person was shot dead by a neighbor when he kind of objected to the neighbors trying to vandalize and set on fire his vehicle sparked and i also mentioned that there was one outsider who died and his body was recovered more than two kilometers from the epicenter of the violence this guy was from bihar and he had just come to haldwani in search of a job and there was another victim who was kind of trying to look for a family member and he was also shot dead so yeah all these five deaths took place while the violence was unfolding and most of them, even I think almost all of them were uh, victims of uh, bullets. They were shot dead during the violence. So, Avnish, have any arrests been made in the matter so far? In total, there are three FIRs registered. Uh, One for the violence that unfolded after the demolition process. The second one is for the attack on the police station and the third one is for the vandalized and vehicle set on fire. In connection to all these FIRs, there are total 30 arrests as of now. Police is also looking for uh, Abdul Malik, who is considered to be the main accused in the case. So yeah, as of now, 30 people have been arrested and uh, seven country-made weapons have also been recovered from them. At the same time, the police informed that uh, ammunition was uh, looted from the police station while the mob attacked the police station. And one revolver which is missing from the police station, is uh, they are still looking for it. Also, what is the situation in the city right now? What kind of measures are still in place? 
for the initial one or two days uh, there was a curfew in the entire uh, area of haldwani but since yesterday the curfew has been relaxed in the haldwani area but in the banbhulpura area there is still a very tight security there is policemen there are barricadings and policemen present at all the intersections all the roads leading to the area have heavy police presence like two days ago the state government also requested the center to provide four additional paramilitary forces so that they can ensure there is high security in this place and like the security is also there because there is a crackdown in search of the accused of the cases so yeah i mean as of now there is heavy security present in banbhulpura area but in the rest of haldwani the life is kind of going back to its normal and next we talk about the farmer protests farmers from punjab are all set to once again raise their voices on the issue of the farm laws which had sparked contention between the country's farmers and the government back in 2021 the issue that triggered nationwide protests 3 years ago is being reignited by punjab farmers who are marching to delhi to ensure that the government addresses their demands including the waiving of farmer debts enacting laws guaranteeing minimum support price that is msp and seeking justice for the lakhimpur kheri massacre sarvan singh pandher the coordinator of kisan mazdoor morcha one of the farmers unions leading the protest spoke to the ani and said pure desh bhar se har har subah se tamil nadu se kerala se bihar se madhy pradesh se haryana se punjab se rajasthan se sabhi pure pradesh se kisan kal करोड़ों करोड़ कुछ करेंगे आज हम लोग यहाँ ब्याज से रवाना होकर फतेहगढ़ साहब में स्टे करेंगे ठीक है मांगे वही है एमएसपी की टू अंडरस्टैंड द डिमांड्स ऑफ द फार्मर्स एंड हाउ थिंग्स आर अनफोल्डिंग ऑन ग्राउंड इंडियन एक्सप्रेस राखी जग्गा जॉइन्स अस फ्रॉम पंजाब फॉर दिस सेगमेंट राखी कैन यू टॉक अबाउट द रीजन वाई दी फार्मर्स आर मार्चिंग फ्रॉम पंजाब टू डेली एंड वेन एंड हाउ इट ऑल स्टार्टेड दिस टाइम Yeah, actually, when in 2020 the farmers had protested, that was against the three farm laws. And that time, the whole of the farmer unions of Punjab they had marched as a one unit. Although they had uh, their ideological differences, but uh, on the farm laws they were at the same page. But here, uh, all the farmer unions are not uh, marching towards Delhi. There are two forums uh, which gave the call of Delhi Chalo. and they are uh, kisan mazdoor morcha this is a flagship union of around 100 farmer unions from across the country and uh, 8 to 10 unions are from punjab and and the other forum is uh, sanyukt kisan morcha non political uh, this was a breakaway faction which was formed out of sanyukt kisan morcha in july 2022 and they also have around 150 farm unions from across the country so their coordinators are from punjab jagjit singh dalewal he is a coordinator of sanyukt kisan morcha non political and uh, sarvan singh pandher is a coordinator of kisan mazdoor morcha and both of them are from punjab so that's why punjab is taking the lead in uh, this delhi chalo march and rakhi right now these farmers have a total of 12 demands could you tell us about these demands and what they exactly are so the major one are msp should be made a legal guarantee and the prices of the crops should be determined as per uh, swaminathan report and they want the debt waiver of the farmers and they also want the government that they should withdraw from the world trade organization as according to the farmers the wto promotes corporate culture in the country and uh, thus ignores the small farmers and the small traders and all and they also want that electricity amendment act 2020 should be scrapped they want 200 days of assured narega work for the narega workers instead of 100 days uh, 200 days per year as of now 100 days per year of the narega work is being given to the workers and they also want the wages should be enhanced to 700 rupees a day and these are few of the major demands and they also want that pension for the farmers and the laborers should start after they attain the age of 60 these are few demand out of those and you wrote that earlier they had reached out to the government can you tell us what happened in that regard so based on their demands they had sent memorandums to the central government that uh, implement the demands and uh, even they had given a call for delhi chalo in december end and uh, as i didn't get any reply from them last email was sent to the union agriculture department and the ministry of commerce and industry on february 6 
that uh, february 13 is our uh, delhi chalo call so afterwards the union government started responding to them and uh, first round of meeting was on uh, february 8 and the second round is taking place on february 12 and the meeting is still going on right and are there farmers protesting from other states as well or is it just punjab yeah actually i mean uh, because i told you that over 250 farmer unions from across the country they are part of this protest but as the coordinators of the farmer unions they are from punjab and hence punjab is taking the lead but uh, haryana farmers rajasthan farmers and uh, up farmers uttarakhand all the farmers they are uh, part of this uh, delhi chalo march and uh, uttar pradesh farmers they have already announced that around 500 tractors uh, from their side will be joining the protest at delhi and same was announced by the rajasthan farmers that not less than 500 tractors will come from uh, rajasthan haryana farmers are doing uh, tractor march practices in their uh, villages although the haryana government uh, is i mean they are doing lot of action within the state as well but despite that they are doing that haryana has however sealed its borders with punjab at different locations and section 144 has been implemented in uh, haryana as well as in rajasthan and haryana has also stopped the internet supply in the mobile data supply in uh, around 8 or 10 districts of area right and as far as the talks are concerned what does the agriculture minister have to say about the situation and who all were present for the talks on monday the union ministers they had come on february 8 and the same ministers they have come on february 12 as well they are uh, arjun munda the union agriculture minister piyush goel union uh, minister of commerce and industry and nitinand rai he is the uh, minister of state uh, of home affairs uh, three of them had come on uh, february 8 and at that time uh, punjab's cm bhagwant man he had coordinated the meeting and he was also part of that meeting and that meeting had took place in a cordial atmosphere uh, this is what uh, the farmers had given a statement after coming out of uh, the meeting hall and the, another meeting uh, which happened on monday the same three set of ministers uh, they came on monday as well however on monday morning uh, the agriculture minister had said that uh, they are very optimistic about the meeting and they will be going to the meeting with an open mind to, to listen to the farmers and also to let them know their point of view also they wanted that they or they were very eager to work for the farmers and also to see what all demands of the farmers can be met and what all the demands are can be in the favor of the farmers at large now rakhi going back a little a committee was formed by the name of the commission for agriculture costs and prices cacp what work was done through that Uh, this committee was formed in july 2022 and uh, actually there is a, a msp on 22 crops but not all the crops get the, an actual msp actually in the market only a small amount of the crop is sold on msp and the rest goes in the open market where farmers they suffer and they sell their crop below the price that's why they they keep on protesting that msp is not implemented in true letter and spirit and the government had given assurance in december 2021 when the farmers had to lift the dharnas from the delhi borders that we will form a committee to work on the msp so based on that promise the government had formed the cacp in july 2022 so this committee afterwards also had six main meetings and 31 sub committee meetings but they are yet to submit a final report on the determining the prices of the crops as per swaminathan report and rakhi you've been reporting on these protests tell us what is the current situation like at the borders yeah actually when the first round of talks between the farmers and the union ministers had taken place on february 8 at that time it was said that the meeting was very held in very conducive environment and all it a positive kind of a feedback was given but on the contrary on the same day haryana government started sealing its borders with punjab they started adding layers of barricades and uh, on monday i was at the shambhu border on national highway 1 which leads to delhi and uh, where i couldn't get the exact number of uh, layering of the barricades but a few of the cops they told that at least 12 layers of barricading uh, has been done at that border which are the boulders the stone slabs the iron nails the barbed wires 
and the very heavyweight vehicles have been put there and of course huge police force paramilitary forces rapid action force all of them have been deputed at the spot and uh, tear gas shells water cannons anti riot vehicles they all are in place and on monday the cops who were on duty at the border they did drills multiple times at least 40 times they did drill during the day i mean in case there is a violence or the farmers come in large numbers how to handle that situation but at the same time the farmers they have started marching towards this shambhu barrier and uh, they have reached in fatehgarh sahib which is about 50 kilometers away from that shambhu barrier and they said that uh, they are waiting here uh, to know the outcome of the monday evening's meeting and whatever uh, the union leaders will intimate them they will proceed accordingly whether they have to go ahead or they have to go back to punjab and also do we know what the farmers are planning to do in response i mean they said that we are aware that uh, a layer of barricading has been done and uh, they also are armed with the cranes and many other equipments uh, along with them the agricultural equipments which they use in the fields a number of them are combined drivers so they said we have all the necessary equipments with us which can be used to remove those barricades they said we had removed the barricades in uh, 2020 as well and we can do the same this time as well if needed And in the end we talk about Madhya Pradesh High Court's observation on demolitions while granting compensation to two people whose homes were demolished by the Ujjain Municipal Corporation the Madhya Pradesh High Court recently observed that it has become fashionable for local administrations to demolish any house without complying with the principle of natural justice it was Ujjain residents Radha Langri and Vimla Gurjar who had filed a writ petition before the High Court claiming compensation while langri alleged that ujjain municipal corporation demolished two of her houses without issuing any notice gurjar was served a notice and moved the high court which granted her a stay soon after on his order passed on february 1st justice vivek rusia granted compensation of rupees 1 lakh to the petitioners justice rusia noted court it has become fashionable now for local administration and local bodies to demolish any house by drawing up proceedings without complying with the principle of natural justice and publish it in the newspaper uncourt the ujjain civic body informed the court that houses were raised in violation of the provisions of the municipal corporation act as no building permission was obtained by the petitioners before the construction of the houses in question therefore the same had been demolished The court on the other hand produced a mocka panchnama a note sheet prepared by the building inspector in Langri's case and said it appeared to be a concocted document that was prepared in the house without going to the spot the court noted that one parvez khan has been recorded as the owner of the house the court said court had the building officer gone to the spot he would have been informed about the name of the petitioner about the ownership There is no such person in the name of Parvez Khan there is no such document to show that he purchased the property only on the basis of this so called oral information the panchnama was drawn and drastic action of demolition has been taken unquot it also added that serving a notice to a fictitious person Parvez Khan is a highly illegal and arbitrary action for which disciplinary action is liable to be taken against the officers concerned You were listening to Three Things by the Indian Express. Today's show was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar and produced by Shashank Bhargav and me Niharika Nanda. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can also tweet us at Express Audio and write to us at podcasts at indianexpress.com. 